Hey everybody, I finally finished putting back together my craft room. Uh, I got a new desk, you can see it here. Uh, I used to sit over here up in the window um, and I used to have a little area here carved out for my crafting or stamping. And um, by the way, I'm not in my studio. This is the stamping area I have created inside the house. Um, it's my old craft room. Um, I do a lot of work in here, um, work as in actual day job work. Um, so the other half of this room is my office that I also share with my husband. He actually sits like literally right here. You can see the edge of his chair. So I'm on the other side of the desk. Anyway, I got this new desk. So I had this idea that I would create this whole workstation in the middle of the room um, and swap out uh, my area here, which used to be for die cutting and... Um, other things and put that over there and then have my new desk sit in the middle. So I found this desk. It's actually not a desk. It's a vanity. Uh, and I'll put the link below to the, to the website, but you can see what I've done is I've taken, uh, the Alex drawers from Ikea. That's what these units are down here. And I got the four drawer one, which has the big file cabinet in the bottom because I, I wanted to store paper and books in there. Um, and I'm sorry about all the banging noise. Um, if you can hear that, my husband is actually doing some home renovations that we've planned out. So you're going to hear that throughout my little tour here. Sorry about that. I'll try and keep it short. But I got these Alex file cabinets to, to store craft things. So there are um, typically four drawers here. There's a big one at the bottom that holds file folders. And then there's three smaller shallow drawers at the top. And I've got four of those here. First of all, I went to Ikea and they didn't have any of the five drawer ones in stock in white. So there was that, but I, um, I wanted these anyway. So I got four of them and there's two back to back. You can see it's a double width desk. And I then have this vanity, which has the drawers on the top. So I bought this tabletop from a place called Impressions Vanity. And so a lot of people use these for makeup. And I've never seen anybody use it for crafting, but now I have. And what I've done is I've attached the legs to the bottom of the, the desktop. And those legs are called Capita, and they're from Ikea as well. You cannot attach legs to the bottom of this particular Alex unit because that bottom drawer has to glide in and out. And it has basically the sides. It doesn't have a bottom cross um, support that solid that goes all the way to the back of the drawer. So you can do that with the Alex five drawer, but you can't do it with this one that has the file cabinet. So the legs had to go up underneath my desktop. And you can also see the whites don't match, which totally fine with that. Um, you're probably not gonna be able to see that in this lighting anyway, maybe on the video, but not in my room on a normal basis. And you can see I've used that space in between the legs and the desk itself to um, store things. So if there is somebody sitting on this side of the desk and I have the stool here that is adjustable height um, for somebody else to craft here in this spot. And what I've chosen to do is this is my stamping area. Um, so I've put my uh, inks, not all of them. I've put a lot of inks in the drawers to kind of um, inspire and sort of get me looking at things differently. So I'm going to show you, I'm not going to show you every single drawer um, because it's just not that interesting um, to me at least. And it will take too long anyway. Um, I don't want to keep you that long. So let me move closer to show you. There are three drawers in this top here. And the first one that I have right down here is, um, that is a watercolor palette that I got from my friend Mary and I put it on a Lazy Susan that I had. And then I have these Daniel Smith watercolors down in here. These are tubes that I have not swatched or um, put into pans yet. I need to pan it and I need to swatch them. That's why they're sitting separately from where I store my actual paint tubes. And then this is a card that I watercolored. Uh, and then there's a little journal back there and a stamp. Um, the journal I, per I, I received from my friend Vicki. Hi, Vicki. And then um, a waffle flower stamp for um, swatching. So underneath, um, like I said, I've used that gap in between. It's a four and a half inch gap here. And that was to make the table height so that it's perfect for me to stand and craft. 
So I'm a short person. I'm only 5'4", maybe a little less. Um, this is the perfect height for me to do my stamping. And if I want to stand or if I want to sit, I can also pull a chair out. I've got a set of stools that I purchased from Amazon here. And I'll show you what I did a little bit differently with the drawers. Now, the top drawer is just a regular um, shallow drawer. So what I've got in here is my um, some different mediums here. Uh, and I won't go through it all, but I was watching YouTube and there is a lady and I forget her name. Hopefully I'll find her video. Um, she tacked her two drawers together so she would get a deeper depth of a drawer. So this is two of the drawers tacked together at the front on each side over here and over here. And I did not put in the bottom of the drawer for the first drawer that you saw. So when I pull it, both of them open because they're tacked together. And I'll show you that. My husband had some leftover MDF from the bottom drawer here. Um, he cut one up for me and we screwed them to tack them together. Of course, avoiding the screw here, this hollow area. And then of course you want to avoid the rail. So this is some of the felt that I have, all of my paper tray. Ink felt is back in here because I use that more often than the others. Um, and then some of my felt scraps here at the front so that I can just dig through, see if I've got a color that I've already used. So um, that is um, what I did with each of the drawers. So each of the four units, I have done exactly the same thing and tacked the second and the third drawer together so I get the extra depth. Um, I'm not going to do a full craft room tour, as I said. Um, but I will show you what's in the top of the desk because I think that's what a lot of people are interested in. These, um, drawers are full extension drawers, so they will open all the way out. That is the difference between the Ikea Alex units and these. I can get all the way to the back of the drawer and you can also see these are all my lawn fawn inks in the full sizing pads. They are doubled up. So there's one on top of the other. And then the, on this side, and sorry about the glare just some journals and some things I wanted to put in here. Um, and again, you can see a tin that's underneath that is uh, my mica powders. So I'm going to move, hopefully I don't make you dizzy this way. And you can see, I have stuff out laid out on the desk because I want to be able to see my stuff and use it. Um, these are just six by six paper pads that I want to use for card making. I have my cutting station here. This is a, Fiskars um, bypass trimmer. This is the best trimmer ever, in my opinion. I don't care what anybody says about that caterpillar. I had one. It. I didn't like it. Um, partly because you don't have one of these, and um, I have. I am so used to having one of these that I can't do without it. Um, and this folds in half. So if you want to really take it with you, you can. But um, it does fold in half, and it's you know obviously you can cut twelve by twelve with this. Um, and you never have to sharpen. So I have two carousels here. One, two. And then this is my Fiskars Fuse manual die cutter. And the reason I have this here is because this is what I use to cut my felt on. Um, I find that this is way more reliable than, say, my Gemini to cut felt. So this is what I use. And I can also, um, I use my Sizzix plate in here with the two um, sandwiches. And this works fine for thin lit dies. It also works for, you know, the big dies too, but this is what I use. Um, and I use the extended platform so I can get more cut. I can also bring in the, the bigger platform and use it on here too, but I don't tend to, to have that much to cut. So you're only seeing the extended platform here. So quickly, this is where I used to sit facing the window and all of my stamps and dies. Well, not all of them, but lots of them are in here. And all of my inks from Stampin' Up were sitting on this bookcase, and I swapped them over to move them to the right. Uh, so I took all of the stamps and dies that used to be on that side and put them here so that they're right behind me. I can just pull from what I want to use. And there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, this hasn't changed. This is all paper. Um, but this is the side of the desk, and you can see what I still have to put away clean up and put away. Those are my Copic refills. And then I have some baskets I need to go through here. That's just stuff for storage of stamps and dies. 
Uh, this is my side of the desk, and I'll try and keep my um, camera angle down. I put all of the Alta New inks in this drawer. So it is two-sided, basically. So it's two separate units that I bought, and you can see the seam right here. Um, and there's, again, another file cabinet on this side. So down the middle, because this is a vanity, you have this, um, I want to say it's about two or three inches. This is where their vanity mirror would sit. You can purchase a vanity mirror that lights up. And because it is for makeup, you would set it on here. And they even have the holes on the bottom to thread up through the bottom for the electrical. And there is a hole in the middle. Oh, I didn't say this, but after this video, or after this piece of it, I will, put, I will add in some screens of what it used to look like before and uh, me assembling it together. Well, sort of the assembly. So I just put some of my favorite things up here that I've received from other people or that I've made myself um, down the middle here. So I have this strip of really great support. I don't have to sit stuff on the glass that's really heavy. And that's where I put my uh, crafting supplies that I use every time I craft. So this carousel has lots of that stuff. And um, this is from scrapbook.com. Then I have these two pink, um, I use them for craft items. I got from Marshalls um, in pink. There's my little strawberry jar from Anna. Hi, Anna, if you're watching. Then I have a whole bunch of my oxide, no, these are not, not my oxide, but my dye ink blenders. Um, I just put them all in this, this uh, cup here. And then there's my Gemini and then my power strip doohickey. So a lot of things are plugged in here. And then I just have a tray of things that, um, stuff that I like to look at. So you can see underneath here, um, I did put my uh, stamp market inks. Um, those are those are all of her ink heads that she has now. I also have some little uh, what do you call these snips for cutting my dies apart. My glasses, reading glasses. Um, in the center drawer, this is where I put the oxide inks. And again, those are doubled up, so there's two layers um, of what you can see. This is the whole set and some of my most used inks like the Versamark. Um, this is detail ink from Ink on 3 for Copic coloring. And then these are my Versafine um, Onyx and there's a brown one in here too. So I use that a lot for sentiments. Um, and then at the, at the really, at the, like right underneath this white section here is the overflow of all Tanu inks, the browns and the grays. They're underneath this white bar. I won't move it because I have to move the chair to, to take it out. Um, and then there's some stamp chamois here. This is what I use to clean my stamps off of when I'm stamping. I just prefer having them. And I have two in here because I use one for dye and one for pigment whenever I'm stamping to clean the different stamps. Um, like I said before, this drawer is a full extension drawer. So um, there is a gap at the front and a gap at the side because they're not exact, which lets me get my finger in there so if I need to pick out a um, ink cube, I can. So yeah, um, there are a lot of inks in here. And I will say this is not my full collection of inks. There are still more. And they're just boxed up separately in a different unit. They're actually, and I'm going to do this. I can't believe I'm going to do this. They're actually along here. So you see these little plastic tubs here? That is all ink as well. Um, not all of them are ink, but I think those five are ink. And then I have another set of ink in my studio that is mostly pigment inks. Um, but, you know, all these cabinets are full of my craft stuff too. There's mostly fabric down in here. And my sewing machine is way down there at the end. So I thought I'd just share that with you. I didn't want to do a full craft room tour because this is the only thing I really changed here. And then I reorganized some of the stuff that was in here um, to better fit my needs. Um, down there at the end, you can kind of see, I do have my setup for taking photos. So um, I leave that up all the time. And uh, it's just a lot easier for me to not have to drag it out each time. So that's it for now. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll try and answer. But I hope you enjoyed this look at my new craft desk. 
Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye. Hey guys. So I forgot I was going to record some of this. <laughs> so I'm putting in my new desk and uh, this is my workstation here in the center of this room. And I actually only use it for die cutting and for my uh, trimmer. Because I have a normally a 12 by 12 Fiskars Fuse die cutter sitting on this side and it takes up the whole width of the table. And then I have my Fiskars trimmer here and then right behind it I usually have my Gemini. And you can see my Gemini sitting right there. It's usually sitting right there on the edge and I can actually sit in my craft chair and work at this station right here. So now you can see my huge mess that I have going on because I'm taking apart this center island station here that I kind of cobbled together with different furniture um, that uh, my husband had and that I had and I'm replacing it with my new desk. So I wanted to show you what it looks like before with which I forgot to show you all loaded up but um, like I said I only use this right now for die cutting so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be flipping and this will become my workstation where I do all my stamping. You can see all my stamps right back there my big stamping wall and this will this area over here will become my die cutting station so this is uh just a little bit about what this is i got these cabinets from ikea um from a business that was being renovated they were switching the shop from a salon hair salon to a ice cream shop and so they wanted to get rid of this whole bank of ikea kitchen cabinets and i got them at a great deal for 200 dollars. there's actually a whole run of them so there's four cabinets strung together in a long line and they had the countertop too. So 200 bucks got me this whole set of cabinets. Behind it on this wall, you guys have seen other videos if you've watched me long enough. These are Ikea Billy bookshelves with the add-on extension at the top. So they go all the way to the ceiling. And this is a very large collection of my stamps um, that goes down to the floor. Um, this is not all of my stamps because I have some in this unit right here. This is also from Ikea, which I forget the name of it, but it used to be a wardrobe. Well, it was a wardrobe um, item. I don't know if they still carry it because when I went to look recently, they didn't have this anymore. So and that's where my Cricut and my Scan and Cut are. So I will be closer to this unit over here, but I can also still reach the stuff back behind. And so what I'm going to probably do is take my inks that are in here and put them in this unit and then take the stamps and just basically flip them um, because my most used dies are right up in here um, and so I want to be able to access them easier from the chair that I'll have right here for the desk so I'll be sitting on that side um, I'll show you the whole thing once it's all done and put together okay Hey guys, so I'm kind of in the middle of things right now. So uh, as you can see, this is where I'm at with uh, putting things together. Um, I have four Alex drawer units and you can only see two of them, but there's another set right behind that are facing the other direction. Um, and I also have the base of my desk sitting on the top here marked off because what I'm going to do is add legs to raise the base up four and a half inches that's how tall these legs are right here and if anybody is wondering they're the white capital legs from ikea and i cannot <clears throat> for this particular set of file cabinets that they sell this is the four drawer with the deep um filing cabinet on the bottom you cannot place legs on the bottom of these file cabinets because that bottom drawer has a little rolling ball underneath it on the front to help you pull out the drawer because that one is probably going to be weighted the most heavy um, with the paper in it. And I'm actually going to put some file folders in some of them to hold paper and some of them will have books. So I wanted the deep drawer to show you that. Um, the other thing I um, am going to do is I've ordered some um, kits for drawers and they're actually for helping you to keep the drawer from sagging 
I know um, with too much weight, the bottom of these drawers is just MDF and it's a thin MDF. And so the more weight you put into it, the more your drawers can sag. I'm not so worried about the bottom ones because they're supported by the bottom piece of the actual filing cabinet. And you can see it here because I don't have the drawers, but one of them inside of the filing cabinet. Um, and so the bottom drawer isn't going to need that, but I think that the top drawers are going to. So that's why you, I finally figured that out. That's why you don't see the drawers in this cabinet because I didn't even attach them to the glides. You actually, um, as part of your assembly to finish the cabinet off, the drawer glides are attached to the actual drawer. So I didn't even bother attaching them on this one because I put them all together and then realized I needed to probably order those um, kits for the drawers. And I ordered the kits off of Amazon. So that's um, just a thing to know about the drawers. Um, in case you guys have um, any sort of dresser or drawers that have the sagging in the middle, um, you can put you know, these straps that I ordered from Amazon and I'll, I'll try and link it below in the description box on them. And that should help fix the sagging problem. Um, I don't anticipate the problem being on the top drawer, but maybe in the middle, there could be an issue if there's too much weight. Um, the other thing I want to show you, and I learned this trick from somebody on YouTube. This is not my original idea. Um, sorry, I just hit my, my arm. These two drawers, are going to be joined together and when I say they're going to be joined together you notice when I pull this drawer out it's rather shallow and that's because of the design of the, the you know the drawers so in order for me to keep some more uh, more items that are taller than the actual drawer I have just done what I saw on another YouTube video and of course I'll try and link her channel below where she removed the base of the drawer so really this is just a faux, faux drawer front. And what she has done in her video is she's tacked. If you line them up together, she tacked them together at the, um, on the side. So I'm going to get my husband to cut some MDF pieces. We have extra MDF. You notice that the bottom of this top drawer isn't inside of it. So I'm going to tack the top drawer to the bottom drawer on both sides on, on here and then the side closest to me. So that when you pull on the drawer face, both of these fronts come out. And so I've done that with all of the drawers in my unit. So there's actually, um, this this will be one drawer as opposed to two, if that makes any sense. You don't have to do that, but I figured for me, um, in what I wanna store in these drawers, I wanna be able to have the option to store something taller than just the, I think it's two and a half inches, I don't know. Maybe it's more than that. But you can see I left the top one just as it is and then took these two and I'm gonna tack them together. But I will do that at a later date and I'll show you that in the end. So I just wanted you to know that. So what I've done is flip the base of the desktop over. I've outlined where my um, filing cabinet is sitting and I'm lining up where I want to put the legs and I'm going to make this a standing sort of desk where I can either stand and craft or I can sit. I do have some chairs, chairs that I bought from Amazon that I already have um, in here and they will fit inside of this open area right here. Now again this is the back side of the or the upside down so it's flipped this curved piece is going to be in the center just like that one is so i have two desktops and so there will be a big hole in the middle um you actually won't see this but there's a big hole in the middle that's going to be there and that's for threading cords up through the unit um so um this actually isn't the front edge of the desk it's on the inside right now because it's flipped over um so i could attach the feet so that's it for now i'll be back soon